with the last pick in this year's draft. Well, I finally see why the majority of the Who That Nation does not like Derek Carr. We saw last year where the organization tried everything in its power to protect Derek Carr's ego. And if you don't believe me, ask Jameis Winston. Derek Carr dealt with a lot of injuries last year, but for some reason, he did not miss a single game. This year, he had an oblique injury and missed four games. So it made me think, why didn't Jameis Winston start a single game last year? It's because they did not want Derek Carr to feel like there was some sort of competition in-house. It's the same reason why we have Spencer Rattler and Jake Hayner as the backup quarterbacks and not a competent backup veteran quarterback. We also saw him last year get into it with Aaron McCoy and throw Chris Olave underneath the bus. And I think that was the breaking point for most Saints fans, seeing him go off on Chris Olave, especially on a play that was not designated to go to Chris Olave. But let's talk about that particular play for a moment. So with the firing of head coach Dennis Allen, a lot of information has come out after the fact. It has come out that a lot of the Saints players did not appreciate Dennis Allen giving Derek Carr special treatment. I guess Michael Thomas wasn't crazy after all. Well, let's go back to Derek Carr throwing Chris Olave underneath the bus. On the play that happened with the Jaguars where Derek Carr threw the ball out of bounds but blamed Chris Olave for not running full speed, the play was not designated to go to Chris Olave. After the game, former head coach Dennis Allen proceeded to protect Derek Carr by throwing Chris Olave clean underneath the bus. Michael Thomas then came out and clarified that the play was not to go to Chris Olave. But DA and the coaching staff was so worried about protecting Derek Carr that they actually went back and changed the play to make it go to Chris Olave just to appease Derek Carr. This is facts. This just came out. They literally changed the entire play to make Chris Olave be one of the reads just to make Derek Carr be right. I see why a lot of players said that DA lost the locker room. Whenever you have favoritism on any type of level, there's going to be some sort of fraction within the group. And speaking of favoritism, we already knew that DA was Mickey Loomis's favorite. He made excuses for DA and then DA made excuses for Derek Carr. And the crazy thing about it is I made excuses for Derek Carr too. When Derek Carr first came to this team, he was pretty mediocre and I told people to at least give it five games. Well, the five games came and went and I was looking pretty stupid. But what did it for me is when I saw him arguing with his teammates, multiple teammates, not just Michael Thomas, Eric McCoy, Koi, Chris Olave. So three different teammates get into an argument and the one common denominator is you. You have to be the problem. Also, a lot of Saints fans did not appreciate the pick six that he threw against the Falcons. And then after that pick six, he congratulated the player who picked him off. In that press conference, he said that that was just a good play and he wasn't supposed to be there. What are you talking about? See, that's the reason why a lot of people stopped rocking with Derek Carr. It also came out today that that same exact play was ran in practice and Jonathan Abram picked the ball off. And guess what? The coaching staff got mad at Jonathan Abram saying that he was not supposed to be there. So instead of big upping your player on defense who made the right read, you scold him to coddle Derek Carr. They literally scolded Jonathan Abram for picking off Derek Carr and then he turns around and throws the same pick in the game against the Falcons. I swear you can't make this shit up. This is why it was necessary for Dennis Allen to be let go. You can't have a leader of men out here with favoritism. It makes sense how he lost the locker room and it also makes sense how he lost his job. Gail Benson had meetings with players of the New Orleans Saints to gauge how they felt about DA. She asked a few of them, do they feel that the locker room was lost? And a few of them said that the locker room had already been lost. And I'm sure they saw this type of activity go on where DA was calling Derek Carr. How are you supposed to make a championship team while you're out here bending the rules for one specific player? I'm sure there is more scenarios of this type of thing happening within the Saints organization, especially between DA and Derek Carr. And we already know that Mickey Loomis was definitely not about to step in to say anything. He had a players meeting last year where he told people to buy in or get out. So it makes me wonder how much of the issue was actually DA and how much of it was really Mickey Loomis. But hey, I won't act like I know what's going on inside the Saints locker room because I never got drafted.